Hello and welcome to Sex Ed Sundays with Dr. Sonia Maya. That's me. I post weekly videos about sex, psychology, and relationships. I have a doctorate in clinical psychology and I'm specializing in sexual issues. So if you're interested in learning more about sex education and talking about spicy time in a way that's stigma and shame free, then definitely keep on watching and make sure to like and subscribe and turn on bell notifications for weekly uploads. Today I wanna to talk about five facts about penis size. And the big question that I keep getting to this day is does size matter? I know I made a video about this in 2020, but this is an update video with updated research on why size matters sometimes, but most of the time it doesn't. The reason why I say for most vulva owners size really doesn't matter that much is because most women are not able to have an orgasm from penetration, whether that's with a penis or a toy, etc. Approximately 75% of women require clitoral stimulation in order to have that O. So in a lot of cases, they might actually have an orgasm from oral sex rather than penetration. Let's say you're sleeping with a woman in the one third. I'm talking about a woman that is able to have an orgasm from penetration. Then maybe, maybe there will be more of a preference for a longer or thicker penis. Saying that long, thick penises are the best is like saying that every single person out there that's attracted to individuals with breasts likes small perky boobs with small nipples. It might be some people's preference, but is it everyone's preference? No. Research shows that bigger than average penises are actually more associated with infections and risk of injury from sex. A lot of people also report that sex tends to be more painful when someone has a very large penis. But if this is something that you struggle with, given maybe that your partner has a large penis or you have a large penis as a male, then you can always use a lot of lubricant and really focus on the foreplay. Focus on that foreplay like you mean it because the more foreplay you do, about 20 to 40 minutes, the easier it is going to be to take bigger sizes because vaginal tenting or ballooning happens where the vaginal opening opens up, but just temporarily, doesn't stay open for that long. So yes, those who finish from penetration without needing clitoral stimulation may prefer deeper penetration, may prefer a larger penis, but if we're looking at about 75% of vulva owners, typically this isn't going to matter as much. What really matters is caring for her needs and pleasing her the way that she wants to be pleased. I know I mentioned Dr. Ian Kerner a lot, but he does have a really good book called She Comes First and in that book he says that sometimes the tongue can be more mighty than the sword and as I've talked about before you need about 20 to 40 minutes of foreplay in order to have an orgasm so keep that in mind when you are enjoying the appetizer I like to think of foreplay as the appetizer sometimes but sometimes the appetizer can be had as the main course you know what I'm saying like you don't have to have wings first you can have wings as your main meal there can be foreplay without focusing on their needing to be an end goal because there's nothing that kills sex drive more than expectation and forcing yourself to have sex. Maybe just tonight we're gonna give each other oral. How about that? How about that? Fact number two I wanna get into is the research shows that men care more about their own penis size than women do. And I did make a video on penile dysmorphia. A lot of men are a lot more attached to their penis size when they're female partners or their vulva owner partners really couldn't care less. In a really large internet survey that collected over 52,000 heterosexual men and women, 85% of the women dating men reported that they were satisfied with their partner size. And only 55% of the men were actually satisfied with their own size. And 45% of those men wanted their penis to be larger. You see the difference here? The women don't really care, but the men care a lot more. And of course, this is related to societal expectations. And if you grew up watching a lot of corn, then that is to be expected because individuals who participate in sex work in terms of the corn industry tend to have larger than average. If you're looking at the average size, we're looking at a little bit over five inches in erect penis. And when we're talking about flaccid penis, we're talking about 3.6 inches. Girth-wise, the average flaccid penis is about 3.66 inches, which is 9.31 centimeters, and around 4.5 inches, which is 11.66 centimeters when erect. If your penis is 5.5 inches or larger, then you're actually in the larger side of average in terms of penis size. Research also shows that most people with penises, approximately 85% overestimate what the average is. So they don't know that it's five something inches. They might think that the average is seven or eight or nine. They tend to be assuming that everybody else is packing something a lot larger. Like why do they have a burrito and I only have a hot dog? It's okay, there's nothing wrong with your hot dog. 
I read a study that collected approximately 92 patients that were all complaining that they felt like they had a short penis. And according to the measurements, none of the patients had a short penis according to the average. Almost all of the patients overestimated what a normal penis size is in terms of the average. And there was a lot of sex education that happened and a lot of them did find that combining sex education with understanding the average penile measurements was very validating and helpful. Yes, we need to talk about these things more because people are freaking out about their penis size when really there is nothing to be worried about. Number three, I wanna talk about penis size in terms of long versus short-term relationships because research shows that women in long-term relationships don't care about penis size as much as those that are looking for short-term relationships. Women in long-term relationships don't really care as much for a long dong. Women typically experience more pleasurable and orgasmic sex in long term relationships. So that goes to show that if you're in a long-term healthy relationship and your partner doesn't have a huge penis, you could definitely have a very satisfying sexual relationship as long as it is reciprocal sex and there's communication happening and all that good stuff. Research does show that some women might prefer a larger penis for short-term hookups, not for long-term relationship. I was reading a study that was saying that some women might prefer a larger penis for short-term sex because the increased physical sensation of having a larger penis might compensate for the reduced psychological connection. You're not really getting much of a psychological connection in a one night stand, so maybe they want a little bit more of like a big penis in that scenario. Never really thought about it that way, but it's pretty interesting. Number four about why penis size doesn't really matter. If you look at the statistics of which vulva owners have the most orgasms, it's lesbians. And as the years go by, it's always lesbians and I'm trying to close the orgasm gap. Because if you look at the orgasm gap, I'll show you this chart right here. Lesbians have the most orgasm compared to heterosexual women. And you know, lesbians not having a penis in the bedroom and using whether it's a toy or their hands or their mouth are able to achieve that orgasmic pleasure and sensation. Then if you think about it like that, does the penis size really matter? No, it doesn't. So lesbians typically finish 86% of the time, whereas heterosexual women typically finish 65% of the time. So if there doesn't need to be a penis involved to have an orgasm, then that tells you right there. Penis size doesn't matter that much. Fact number five about penis size. Girth seems to matter more than length. And I've talked about this a lot. When I go live on TikTok, people are always like, yeah, it's always about the girth. And there's actually reasons for this. So those who do care about size might care more about girth. When you think about the nerve endings in the first couple inches of the vagina. Every time I talk about the vaginal canal, I always go like this, even though I probably shouldn't be using my fingers anytime soon for that kind of thing with these types of nails. But um, <laughs> anyway, besides the point. When you think about the vaginal canal in general, the first two inches of the vaginal canal have a lot of nerve endings. So if you think about girth, that would make sense for that to be more important than length when you look at nerve ending stimulation. In a study published in the journal Plus One in 2015, researchers used a variety of 3D models of penises to survey women's preferences for penis size, which I think is a very fun study. On average, women preferred an erect penis of about 6.4 inches in length and five inches in circumference for one-time partners. Remember, one-time partners, not long-term. They were saying in this article that a larger circumference might stretch out the vaginal opening and given that what I was mentioning before with the first couple inches, that might stimulate the crura of the clitoris, which that's where these parts are right here. I'll show you in this diagram. So it might stimulate the crura and the vestibular bulbs. And also the clit glands, so the outer clitoris might actually be stimulated more by penis movement in this type of scenario. Lastly, I do want to remind you that peen size is not associated with stamina. And a lot of people on the internet do tend to argue what is more important, penis size or stamina? And I would say Say from my particular work with clients and my research that stamina seems to matter more but of course what matters the most is communication and being willing to diversify your strategies when it comes to pleasing your partner by the way if you do happen to have a smaller penis there are some positions that you can try that are helpful doggy style is a good position and if you're gonna try doggy style with your partner I highly recommend that the individual receiving arches their back you know puts their head down and brings their butt up that can help you get in deeper and if you are somebody that has a thin penis, then you might want to try a position such as missionary, but you're going to bring her legs right up in front of you and close them. So any position where the legs are closed is going to be able to create more of a tightness. So if you have a thinner penis, then you can work with that. 
So try that and let me know how it goes. And like I've said before, stamina seems to be more important. So if you're worried about your peen size, maybe start working on your stamina instead. I've made a few videos about how to last longer in bed on my TikTok, but there's also this one right here if you wanna check that out. But bottom line here, there's no such thing as a normal penis. It's all a personal preference. And if you're feeling insecure about your penis, I'm hoping that this video is helpful because it is still one of the number one questions that I get, whether it's my DMs or my lives or just in general, people are so insecure about size. And it's really a societal issue that I'm hoping to debunk like so many other societal issues that are involved in sex education or the lack thereof. Good sex has nothing to do with numbers. It has nothing to do with measurements. It has more to do with communication and connection. And if you wanna learn better ways to connect with your partner, as well as more sex education, and evidence-based research based on that spicy time. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on bell notifications. And if you like this video, then you may enjoy this video that I made last week. I'll see you next week for another Sex Ed Sundays with Dr. Sonia Maya.